move on to react to Manchester United sacking Eric Ten Hag. Um, sacking Eric Ten Hag after United lost the game, lost to West Ham this past Sunday with a, a late goal from Somerville to make it 1-0. Casemiro equalizing in the 81st minute. And the winning goal came in from Jared Bowen. Dramatic win. Um, dramatic win with that penalty in that last moment in which, um, you know, there were highly, not high, uh, controversial penalty. Um, but, um, but, um, the, what happened is West Ham, they got the victory. And, uh, Eric Ten Hag sacked this morning. Um, they waited a little bit, you know, they gave themselves 24 hours. Uh, no, they didn't give themselves 24 hours. They sacked them the following morning. But, um, look, um, finally, you know, finally, it's been a long time coming. I thought this really, I thought when, whenever, Eric, the funny thing is, I thought when Eric Ten Hawks really, the, really it turned around, like, not turned, but, it, you know, the, you know, the turning point really, the big turning point, there was a lot of turning points, but the big turning point, you got to go back to that Coventry. It was actually a win, but it was a disgusting and embarrassing win against Coventry in that FA Cup semifinal. But they survived, and then they eventually won the FA Cup final against City, which probably helped them save his job. Then this season off another, after they did a whole evaluation in the summer to even decide whether he was good enough to be retained, you know, they've had a poor start to their campaign. They're sitting 14th in the Premier League after nine games with three wins, uh, with three wins and four, three wins, two draws, four losses, only 11 or only 11 points through nine games. Yeah, it was coming and it should have came earlier, but it's here now. And yeah, Eric Ten Hag, he is sacked and, uh, you know, to, to wrap up his, to recap his career on United, you know, that first season, I have to say, that first season, he they were good that season, that first season. There was hope, at least. There was hope. They finished second place. They won an EFL Cup for the first time, or they won a trophy for the first time in, I believe it was six years, a ridiculous trophy drought, something of that sort. Don't quote me on that. Um, they won a trophy for the first time. They finished second place in the Premier League. They played some good football in certain periods. He had a lot to deal with, and I thought he dealt with a lot of it in pretty good in a pretty good way, in a firm way, with the Cristiano Ronaldo situation, which always is a difficult situation to deal with if you're a new manager. And um, and what they did that season, I thought they were pretty good, you know? And, and it, there was a hope. There was hope. A lot of Manchester United fans believed. They were really, really high on Eric Ten Hag. Then the following year, just they had a lot of injuries, but just... The performance levels was not good enough game in, game out. No sort of consistency. The results was horrible as well. Some signings that we expected to take that next level now this season. That season, um, players that came in for a lot of money that that um, Eric Ten Hag wanted, like Anthony, Anthony, Onana, uh, Anthony, Onana, players of that sort, uh, did not fill the bill, did not perform to a level that was expected of them. They finished eighth in the in the, the Premier League that season. Um, they also, you know, got eliminated in the Champions League group stages. It was horrible. They did go on, though, and it saved his job, essentially. They won the FA Cup final, as I was saying, against City that season. But it put him in a position that he was coming in already under pressure, and he has... Cracked under pressure. There's just not been good enough so far this season. He gets sacked. But to recap, you know, he did have that good season, that opening season where they finished second place. He did win two trophies in his managerial career at United, which is the most that any manager has won since Jose Mourinho did back in 2016 when he won the um, when he won when he did the double, the FA Cup or the AFL Cup and the Europa League. So, you know, so there is that aspect to it, Eric Ten Hag. You probably have to say, despite how bad United have been, you know, the past season and in a few months, I think he was a more successful manager than every other manager's, you know, 
in the period other than Jose Mourinho since since um, um, Sir Alex Ferguson. You know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he had a few, se- you know, he had a season where he finished second and he had that magic, not magical, but defined his legendary moment that a PSG comeback. But um, he, he, he had a better, he had a better tenure than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He won two trophies. Let's just put some respect there. Um, better tenure than Louis Van Gaal, Ga- David Moyes, you know. But again, it's just not been good enough, and it was coming for a very, very long time, and and you could almost tell that he he probably I think he probably knew he probably knew, and because if you see the body language and when he's you know when he's shaking Jolin Lopetegui after the game and just his you know his um his body language, his facial expressions. And maybe it's just the frustration of the penalty and losing the game and the dramatic fashion and all that. But he really looked like a manager that knew uh, something is coming, that he might be gone. And um, and yeah, it, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it was a long time coming. But there has been rumors that Ruben Omori, he's the leading candidate for the United job and talks have already emerged. Um, and that he's aware of the interest. Uh, they did appoint Ruud van Nistelrooy as the interim manager, and there was a lot whenever he was initially si- um, initially hired as assistant manager, and even talks throughout that he's, he, it's looking like he's poised to take over eventually somewhat throughout the season. He is on an interim basis, but it doesn't seem like United have any, you know, have, it doesn't seem like United have any, um, any thoughts on what you know? Letting it, it's like trying to see, you know, what Van Nistelrooy can provide. It seems like United are very, um, um, are very steadfast in their approach of Ruben Amorim. Ruben Amorim, by the way, he, you know, there was sources that said Manchester City really would prefer him if Pep Guardiola has been set, uh, you know, announces that he's leaving, and maybe this also pushed United to make the move earlier so that they can, you know, so that they can go after, you know, they can make this approach before City can with City, you know, with Guardiola not officially announcing that he's leaving City. Um, Amorim, he's also been linked with Liverpool before Slots got the job. Um, the 39-year-old, he has been charged at Sporting Lisbon since 2022. He's won two Portuguese league titles despite not having the despite having, you know, not having the resources provided that Porto and even Benfica have, um, you know, so we'll see. Um, and when he was asked at the sporting, uh, in one of his press conferences, he says, I was already expecting this question and obviously I'm not going to talk about the future because otherwise I'll always have to comment. I'm very proud to be sporting coach, that's all. Um, Yeah, so you know, I'm, uh, I think that'll be a good fit. But at the end of the day, no matter what manager United hire, there's a clear issue at this club, and it starts from the top. And I've been saying it over and over again. And to think that a manager would just come in and fix it, is just gonna lead to mistakes. It's gonna just, it's, it's the definition of idiots he's doing the same thing over and over again and that's what they've done since Sir Alex Ferguson with Louis van Gaal, David Moyes, Jose Mourinho, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Rafa Ragnick even for a period and now Thomas um, and now Eric Ten Hag you know the manager isn't the issue every single time at the end of the day you know there's some real issues at the club that needs to be addressed